Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, the World Health Organization announced last month that the West African country of Benin has eliminated the neglected tropical disease, trachoma, as a public health problem. Now, Benin is the fifth country in whose African region and one of 17 countries in the world that have eliminated trachoma as a public health problem. So joining me today to talk about trachoma and the achievement in Benin is Stephanie Palmer. Stephanie is the trachoma technical advisor for the global organization FHI 360. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the program. Hi, thank you for having me. You bet. Um, very excited about all this news. It not only was it Benin, but there was a, a second African country. And what country What country was that again? Mali. Mali, that's right. Um, but we're going to specifically talk about Benin today and, and the disease. So let's go ahead and start with some information concerning trachoma. Um, you know, this is not something that a lot of people in the States are aware of, right? It's, it's really a um, uh, seen in... Um, uh, countries with uh, more poverty, if that's an accurate way to put it. Um, so, Stephanie, can you talk about the disease, the pathology itself, and the causative agent, which a lot of people may find interesting? Sure. Um, so, trachoma is a bacterial infection, and it's caused by the bacterium Chlamydia trachomatis. And probably most listeners are familiar with this bacteria because it also causes the STI Chlamydia. Um, chlamydia is one of what are termed neglected tropical diseases. This is a group of 20 diseases or conditions that are generally found in poorer areas throughout the world. And trachoma is a progressive diseases. Um, in areas where trachoma is endemic, trachoma infections are common among children, and they might have multiple infections per year. And after years and years of repeated infection, this causes scarring on the inner eyelid. And then that in turn causes the eyelid margin and the eyelashes to turn in and the eyelashes to rub against the cornea. And this is a really painful and debilitating condition. Um, when you talk to patients, they'll often describe it as being pricked in the eye by a thorn or mm -hmm. their eyes being set on fire. And this is a major source of blindness around the world too, right? Correct. It's the leading cause of infectious blindness in the world. Sure. Um, Stephanie, how many people and how many countries are directly affected by this uh, pathogen? Yeah, right now there's about 125 million people who are thought to live in areas uh, where trachoma is endemic. Uh, I believe um, at the beginning of the global program, it was around 59 countries um, where trachoma was thought to be endemic. Most of these countries and areas are in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, but there are also areas of Central and South America, the Middle East, Asia, Australia, and the Pacific Islands that are affected. Um, but the good news is, um, you know, the 125 million represents about a 90% decrease from 20 years ago. And um, we now have 17 countries among them, Benin, um, that have been declared by WHO as having eliminated as a public health problem. Yeah, good stuff. Um, Stephanie, how does this spread? How, how do people contract it? Yeah, so as we'd mentioned before, trachoma is often found in the poorest areas of the country where there is low access to water and sanitation and where hygiene practices might be deficient because they don't, people don't have access to proper water and sanitation. And so we often talk about it being transmitted person to person via the three Fs, which are fingers, fomites, and flies. So fingers refers to when an infected person, and these are generally children, you know, touches their face and then touches another child. And of course, children don't wash their hands often. Um, so they're often touching with infected fingers. And then fomites are objects that can be contaminated and then also transfer the infection. And with trachoma, we're generally talking about cloths that can be shared. So for example, bed sheets where children are sharing a bed or cloths um, that are used to wash multiple children's faces. And then finally, flies also transmit the disease. Um, 
when you see pictures of trachoma endemic areas, there's often pictures of children with flies surrounding the eyes. Mm -hmm. And the flies are feeding on the ocular and nasal secretions that might be harboring the bacteria. And so once the fly has fed on one child, they'll fly off and land on another person's face and can infect them that way. Boy, that just sounds so horrible, right? <laughs> um, now there's a thing called the SAFE strategy to eliminate trachoma. I believe that's a World Health Organization um, thing. And uh, can, you, can you go through the SAFE and uh, let the audience know what that's all about? Sure. So SAFE stands for Surgery, Antibiotics, Facial Cleanliness, and Environmental Improvements. Um, surgery refers to a procedure that can be provided to people with advanced trachoma. So when the eyelashes are starting to rub the eyelids. So the procedure basically just turns the eyelid margin back to its proper position. The eyelashes are no longer rubbing the eye and the person is not going to go blind from the disease. Um, antibiotics, um, we conduct on generally an annual basis what's called mass drug administration. Um, and the medicine that we use is Zithromax, which is provided by the pharmaceutical company Pfizer. And it's done for a number of years, um, depending on how much uh, trachoma was in the area. And then we do periodic surveys to check to make sure that um, the antibiotics are working. And then finally, the last two, the facial cleanliness and environmental improvements are really meant to address this, these issues of lack of water and sanitation that are in these communities. So when we talk about facial cleanliness, we're often talking about health education, about hygiene, and environmental improvement really refers more to the provision of clean water, latrines, or other sanitation options. Um, and these, these arms of SAFE are really designed to be two pronged, this one to first to decrease, help decrease disease prevalence, but then also once the antibiotic um, distributions have stopped to make sure that the disease doesn't return. Now, let me just piggyback on the antibiotic portion. Cl chlamydia trachoma is pr pretty easy to treat, right? Um, but the problem is reinfections. Correct. Yeah. Yes, and there's, there's a, um, there is evidence from studies showing that, you know, doing treatments in, you know, large communities um, does also create sort of a herd effect. So that's the reason for needing to really do it once a year as opposed to each time that an individual child is infected. Okay, great. All right. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, switch gears to the accomplishment in Benin. Um, can you give the listeners an overview about the country itself? Again, it's not the most common country, you know, so a lot of people may not even be aware of where it's located. Yeah, sure. So Benin is a, is a small country. It's um, a little bit smaller than the state of Pennsylvania. Um, the population's only about 14 million. Um, yeah, and if you're thinking about, uh, you know, the map as a whole, um, it's on the southern coast of West Africa um, with Nigeria to the east and Togo to the west. And as you're showing, Burkina Faso and Niger to the north. Um, the population um, generally re relies on subsistence agriculture for survival. Um, but although a lot of listeners may not um, be terribly familiar with Benin, a lot of them may have more recently become familiar uh, from the movie The Woman King, which is about the female warriors from the kingdom of Daomey, which is now a part of Benin. Okay, um, good, good introduction to the country. Um, now let's, let's go to what the FHI 360 has done. You worked with the uh, country's health ministry. Um, can you describe the work that was done um, to eliminate trachoma? And how, you know, how many how many years have you been doing this and the whole the whole process? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, first, I think it's really important to make it clear that all of this was led by the Ministry of Health and that FHI 360 was a partner of the Ministry of Health and a partner among partners. Um, FHI 360's work actually started fairly recently um, in 2019. Um, but USAID, who is our donor, um, to fund the work that we're doing has been supporting Benin for much longer, since 2013. Um, 
And USAID has supported the Mass Drug Administration over the years that it was needed in Benin um, through another partner, um, RTI International. And then once um, FHI 360 started intervening, um, we've really helped out with the last mile work. So a lot of this has really been gathering the data to show that trachoma is no longer a public health problem, and then supporting the Ministry of Health to compile all of this information into what's called the elimination dossier, which they then submit to the WHO um, for consideration of um, being uh, validated as having eliminated trachoma as a public health problem. Okay, so so your office must be really excited. A lot of celebrations. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's really really good stuff, and I'm I'm sure the people of the country really appreciate everything that was done. Um, Stephanie, I'm going to go ahead and give you um, uh, some time to to close out the, the the podcast to talk about the work of FHI 360, and of course I will link to the website in the show notes of the podcast when I publish it. But you have the floor, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so FHI 360 is a really large global organization, and we've got staff working in more than 60 countries across various topical areas. Um, other than health, um, we also work in education, the environment, crisis response, and nutrition. Um, I work in a, a rather small division, frankly, um, of FHI um, called the Neglected Tropical Diseases Division. Um, our main work is supporting the ministries of health in 11 countries in West Africa, including Benin, um, to control or eliminate five neglected tropical diseases. And besides trachoma, we also work on lymphatic filariasis, onchocerciasis, schistosomiasis, and soil transmitted helminths. Um, and our, our main donor is USAID, um, and again, under uh, a program called ACT to End Entities West. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you, Stephanie Palmer, for sharing your time and expertise, and congratulations on this great work that you guys accomplished along with the Ministry of Health. Uh, hat tip to you. Yeah, thank you so much, and congratulations to Benin. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks.